My name is Kim Solon. I am an affiliated senior research associate at the Department of Philosophy at Uppsala University. And I recently accepted a post as senior lecturer in computing at Gotland University. Uh, my essay was called Mathematics and Religion um, on a remark by Simone Weil. Simone Weil, as you might know, was a French <coughs> philosopher and mystic. She was also, and this is not as known, uh, the sister of André Weil, the famous mathematician. She disagreed with him on uh, how one should understand ancient mathematics, which is quite interesting if you know the Unguru debate about the history of mathematics in which uh, André Weil participated. It seems he had some disagreements with his sister as well. <coughs> now, it's difficult to read Simone Weil. And it's even more difficult to write about her. And to prove this, I've uh, written down in a very nice font uh, a quote. And this quote is uh, the point of departure of my essay. And I'll spend two minutes of my time reading this quote for you. So Simon Weil writes, Pythagoras, only the mystical conception of geometry could supply the degree of attention necessary for the beginning of such a science. Is it not recognized, moreover, that astronomy issues from astrology and chemistry from alchemy? But we interpret this filiation as an advance, whereas there is a degradation of attention in it. Transcendental astrology and alchemy are the contemplation of eternal truths in the symbols offered by the stars and the combination of substances. Astronomy and chemistry are degradations of them. <coughs> when astrology and alchemy become forms of magic, they are still lower degradations of them. Attention only reaches its true dimensions when it's religious. So this is a very surprising thing to say, of course, and it's very typical, Simone Weil, to say that astronomy is a degradation of astrology. This goes pretty much against common, the common view on these things. Um, so, but what she basically singles out uh, are three differences. On the one hand, astrology and alchemy as forms of magic. And then we have normal astronomy and chemistry, as we know them. And then we have astrology and alchemy as contemplation of eternal truths in the symbols offered. So there's an important difference here between magic and contemplation of eternal truths. This is something which I think that we in our time might have a very hard time to understand. We might be pretty good at recognizing the difference between magic and, and regular science. But this, this last uh, distinction might be fairly unknown to us. Now, since I have a background in the mathematics of computing, I thought about what this can be for mathematics. What can this mean in mathematics? And this is basically what my essay is about. So I was thinking about what could mathematics as a form of magic be? And then, of course, on the applied side, I think there's a lot of applied mathematics that's fine as a formal system, but doesn't really have anything to do with, with what it purports to be talking about. Then right. we have pure mathematics, and that's, uh, I think, uh, many so-called mathematical explications of concepts, infinity, uh, computability, finite method, um, finite procedure. Many of these are akin to, to magic, I think. Then, of course, we have mathematics proper, which the un un unsurveyable literature on the philosophy of mathematics shows us this isn't a very easy question either. What is mathematics proper? But I think we can be clear enough about this uh, in order to uh, uh, distinguish it to, to mathematics as contemplation. And this is what I try to sort out in my essay. What could this be? And you find these kind of things in Simone Weil's writings, where she uses results from mathematics, you could say, not in the magical way, not in the proper way, but more uh, like this contemplation. 
Thank you very so, much. Uh, mm -hmm.